Hello and welcome back to Podcasting is Praxis. I'm Dave, my pronouns are he and him. I'm James, my pronouns are they and them. I'm Jamie, my pronouns are he and him. I'm Rob, my name he and him. And I'm Alistair, my pronouns are also he and him. Somehow we got here. <laughs> By yeah, the finally. most efficient road possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the fucking 20 minute detour. Anyway, with us this week, we have returning guest, Lila. Hello, comrades. My pronouns are she and her. Thanks for having me back. Also, I've just drank a lot of tango very quickly and I'm really paranoid that I'm going to do a massive burp, which is why <laughs> this has become st- somewhat awkward. Well, still is. <laughs> well, it would add a good it would be really bad. to this, uh, this podcast that's yeah. sorely needed. Yeah. I don't know why you invited me back, to be honest. I think it's been long enough that you've forgotten how annoying I am. <laughs> I, I, to be fair, to be fair, the last time you were on, the first time you were on, it was just piss sky chat. So <laughs> a burp's probably fine. <laughs> Good. Uh, set the bar where it needs to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Ad- <laughs> Advanced adventures in whale poo were also like part of the <laughs> curriculum, so like it's a it's a steep learning curve from here. Yeah, welcome to Podcasting's Praxis, where we practice homeopathy on bodily fluids and substances, diluting them down to the point they're tolerable. So, yeah, we're Much gonna like find out. Podcast. We're gonna find out exactly what the barrier between juice and not juice is. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Only I can possess that knowledge. <laughs> people, people need I, to know. I would, I would simply erect a vast dome over my juice so nothing can fall into. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I yeah, am so brew I dome. To... Is that anything? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> 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 it intercepts a lot less missiles now that they've taken all the sugar out. <laughs> it intercepts fried bars bars or the ballistic trajectory, yes. <laughs> Actually, unironically, this episode will in large part be about ballistic trajectories, but not in the way that is currently world historically happening. Um, yeah, mainly because... about the number of listeners this podcast has. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the parabolic shift. As we find our episodes funnier, everybody else fucks off. It's an interesting correlation. <laughs> That's called artistic integrity, I think you'll find. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, modern parlance, dedication to the bit. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to start tonight uh, with, uh, in, with you know, threats of an invasion, uh, but not the one you might be thinking about. Uh, Boris Johnson's memoirs are coming out soon, so they're, they're doing, you know, the usual spicy bits promo bullshit. And normally, like, I wouldn't possibly give a shit, uh, except this time he threatened me and my family personally. And I have, you know, a unique set of skills of podcasting and reading some shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the, the the Tory part is coming for podcasters. Yes, that's, that's right. Exactly. Today, I reckon Rob could take Boris Johnson quite easily. I'm fairly <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen Rob? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that he's Dutch, so he must be about nine foot tall. So. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody thought Baron Harkonnen was. Well, everybody thought Baron Harkonnen was nothing much while he was lying in that tub, but you know. <laughs> yeah, you just you wait till Robert's on all the black oil. <laughs> Truffle oil, specifically. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to get that pizza with the black stuff, uh, you know, to, to promo that new shit movie, and then I'll become invincible. Anyway, uh, so now that I've done fucking promo, because that bit is in my head. Um, no, this is Boris memo- uh, Boris's memoirs during uh, Rona time, and uh, it turns out that the EU had some stocks Isn't of the uh, vaccine. for a good chunk of that. Yeah, he was, but this was during a bit where he was like more awake, uh, where apparently they were uh, like a bunch of vaccine stocks that the UK was either promised or they bought or whatever, but they weren't getting delivered. 
uh, and basically UK was trying to get their hands on it. And the warehouse was in uh, in Leiden, which is quite near to my hometown. So I actually know the specific warehouse they're talking about. Uh, you know, <laughs> I could have just like let them in after you hear hours. That? It's not Rob, like Rob defended. denied Britain. Rob denied Britain yes. precious <laughs> vaccines for coronavirus. Good. Yes, exactly. You don't deserve them. <laughs> no. <laughs> I simply looked at Britain and I said, what have you done for me lately? And then, you know, I made some <laughs> rational choices. I'm I'm just astounded that Boris Johnson was going to propose the first ever justified war by the British. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, apparently after two months of negotiating for this batch of vaccines, uh, Boris was so fed up with the EU having, and I got this from the mail, so you have to excuse the verbiage, but um, having kidnapped the vaccine, <laughs> as you do. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so he did what like any normal person, certainly any normal prime minister does, which is that he simply asked the uh, UK armed forces to draw up a plan to invade Holland <laughs> and grab the vaccines. <laughs> Uh, this is a quote from The Guardian. The Deputy Chief of the Defence Staff, Lieutenant General Doug Chalmers, told the Prime Minister the plan was certainly feasible and would involve using rigid inflatable boats to navigate the Dutch canals. <laughs> <laughs> that feasible is doing a lot of heavy lifting, I think. I think it would... I mean, I don't think we'd win, but it would be feasible to do. You'd win. Right? The Dutch military is, like, more shit than the English one. Like, you but would I think win, that I the rest of Europe would be on your side. Yeah, that's true. But like the, the German military is also shit. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> Bravo to Stroopwafel. Is this is that, is that anything? Or is that... <laughs> <laughs> no, I would watch it all banter. unfold with great interest. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd be here for the banter of watching France rebuffing the UK and just seeing, you know, all the chuds down south just blowing a gasket over it. It'd be oh, pretty yeah. good. France would kick the shit out of Oh, man, that'd be, that'd be so good. We could re-establish the continental blockade. That'd be so good. I'm I'm really quite up for this now. <laughs> You're all missing out on um, the Ross Kemp in Amsterdam that we'd, we'd get out of it. <laughs> 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 the Danny Dyer movie they'd make five years later. Oh, man. <laughs> Danny Dyer versus the Dutch. Wow. <laughs> Quote the mail. They would then rendezvous at the target, enter, secure the hostage goods, exfiltrate using an articulated lorry, so a lorry, and make their way to the channel <laughs> ports, which I assume would be opened at that point. <laughs> rendezvous, rendezvous with who? Uh, no, they would just simply make their way to... Oh, they, 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 they would take their little boats. They would all meet at the target. You know, they, <laughs> like so Gaz, would, be... Gaz would show up first and then 10 minutes later, Baz, and, you know, on, so on down the line. I'm imagining it would be like Gibbo and Cheeks and Co. But yeah. like... <laughs> <laughs> They're our most elite soldiers, surely. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no vaccines for the children. I've just heard from Ricey and Gippo. <laughs> Poor Ricey forgot to hook up the uh, you know actual trailer to the lorry, and they've just driven off, leaving the stolen goods sitting in customs. That would be pretty great. <laughs> uh, Quote again, The Guardian. However, the deputy chief of the defense staff told Boris Johnson that it would be difficult to carry out the mission undetected. Well, I mean, yes. <laughs> Meaning the UK would, quote, have to explain why we are effectively invading a long standing NATO ally. <laughs> because because right when they Israel kidnapped the vaccine, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Britain's Eleven has a very different vibe, especially given all the water pollution we're dealing with. <laughs> so, <laughs> Boris Johnson concluded, Of course, I knew he was right and secretly agreed with what they all thought, but I didn't want to say that out loud, that the whole thing was nuts. I'm like, but you called the meeting to discuss the insane <laughs> plan. Like, you can't, like, float above the frame be like, hmm, this is all very strange. I'll, <laughs> I'll be so honest that this is exactly what I would be like as Prime Minister. <laughs> 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 this is like... <laughs> yeah, I've played this Not Crusader is... Kings 3 to know how this ends. Fully <laughs> <laughs> what my tenure would be like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Lila fabricating claims on Transylvania. <laughs> fabricating? Rude. <laughs> <laughs> I look, for, I look, look forward to living in Lila's caliphate. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> it would be weird. And that's, that's all you can say about anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> Quite frankly, given the current Dutch government, it would undoubtedly be a fucking improvement. So, you know, like, I'll, I'll take what I can get. Uh, anyway, speaking of taking what you can get or like what you can't get anymore, um, so the uh, the tuition fees are going to go up over the next five years to ten thousand five hundred pounds a year. No, here they're no. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. Yeah, but with you, the the train fares are going up, so like you get screwed, but just in a they you know, already different, fucking different... have a <laughs> nearly double. <laughs> fucking Scott, Paul, Scott, Paul, Scott, Paul, Scott. Yeah, Paul. We, 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 We've assembled Scott, six Paul, of the Paul, finest Paul. crabs that we could find tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Congregated in the podcasting bucket. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, they are continuing uh, a policy of, you know, raising tuition fees that began under the last Labour government, and which, as far as I could tell, has only been a great success for the UK and its university sector. You know, no mm -hmm. more problems. Yeah. Because I was told... Doing under Tony. I was told under Tony Blair that raising the tuition fees to three thousand pounds would be it, and like we would simply have saved the university sector. And then they were raised to a, another couple thousand, by to nine thousand. And then I was told, yeah, but only the best universities are going to charge nine thousand, and the others are going to charge less because of you know market competition and efficiency. Um, and now I'm told that they're going to go to ten thousand five hundred for important reasons. And that'll be fine, a I guess. Year or a term, or how does that work? Uh, a year, I think. Oh, right, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's it, 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 it is a year. Uh, but don't you worry about it. Like, if you if you're one of the rare people in the UK uh, who doesn't have any money, and I know you know all our pockets pockets are bulging with that Patreon.com for slash practice cast money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Seamless. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, quote the Guardian, poorer students would be shielded from the impact by the reintroduction of maintenance grants, which were up to £3,500. I'm not sure if that's a year or just like in total over your whole university term. I assume the latter because, because you know, cunts, until they were abolished by the Tories in 2016. So, oh, you we know. Can, we can it, only ever do the, just the most arse backwards, completely chopping off our nose to spite our faces uh, policies that are available to us no we we could not we could not conceivably tax people who earn more to make sure that the uh, people on lower incomes don't have to spend any money to go to university um no we just well, have to do communism. this stupid shit so that they <laughs> yeah that yeah exactly um yeah we have to, we just have to do this stupid our sake of Ah, Grants, and do you uh, uh, do your parents earn an arbitrary amount of money or not? Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Also, you only get this money like after your first term, so you have to pay the full whack up front, and then you know maybe maybe you get the money if like you filled in the paperwork uh, correctly. So yeah, like I look, uh, I look, I look forward to to this being uh, you know a, a good system. Just, and the reason we're doing this, by the way, is that just don't go to university. It's not like yeah. yeah. It's not like statistically, you're not going to get a job at the end of it anyway. So like, who gives a shit? Yeah, just turn, don't even they'll want you to go to university. So that's enough reason to not do it. Yeah. <laughs> Simply join the growing ranks of the very successful podcasting crowd. You know what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Don't do that. That's a terrible idea. We're net. We're not happy. Patreon.com for sex practice cast. Uh, anyway, so. Universities UK, which is the body representing the vice chancellors, you know, by where, which we mean the worst grasping cunts in the entire university system, is uh, publishing a blueprint for further high, higher education on Monday. Uh, it is expected to set up plans for is these it, institutions. Does it just say more for more money for me? Fuck you, because like no, specifically <laughs> what they're saying is we're going to have um, less dirty foreign students and more like homegrown students because we don't, you know, because they they're paying more tuition fees now. I mean, that's, that's just not going to fucking happen, though, is it? Like, well, actually, all, it is. All of these... I mean, unless unless they're literally being forced to accept less foreign students, then, like, the foreign foreign students have to pay the full whack anyway. So, like, why why would they do that by choice? 
Mm -hmm. uh, they would because essentially the foreign students are no longer coming in the numbers that they were because uh, you remember oh, I think it was last Britain's year or the year before. Hole. Yeah, also that, <laughs> but because they um, they they put in that law that universe that foreign students can't bring oh, yeah, family no, anymore. No family, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh did Kiss Starmer roll that back? Oh, that's how what how weird's that? No, 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 no. So like we're gonna have more you know white uh, students and less from other countries, and then uh, it, it it you know like. And because the universities are no longer making the money from specifically Chinese and Nigerian students, which was pretty much waking, yeah. like keeping a lot of the in education sector alive at this point, uh, we need to make it up by you know throwing them more money from some other source, which is uh, you. Well, I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm not yeah, going to go the first me. time. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, smart. Frankly. <laughs> I do think, as somebody who did not go to university but made friends with all of the people in university who did loads of drugs, uh, <laughs> I, think, I mean, I mean that's the winning combination, that, really. I think that there are benefits to going. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to, otherwise, where will the rest of us get the drugs? Well, exactly, and you know, somebody's got to take. You've got to have some working class representation in these hallowed institutions of, I don't know what that they do there, mad, made up shit. If there's no one working class there, then there's no one there to ruin their time. Yeah, yeah you got to be there to be a killjoy and to figure out which posh kids will give you loads of cheap cocaine. <laughs> it's, the, it's the ones in the red trousers I can tell you that for nothing <laughs> oh, I think Christ, if they're giving you the accurate. cocaine it's by its very definition quite cheap <laughs> well yeah exactly exactly you get it Rob you get it it's because you're Dutch <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I did have a mate who wants like genuinely his dealer gave him like six grabs of <laughs> of coke for free <laughs> simply in exchange for holding this bag for a few days and don't look inside it <laughs> that was a fun time <laughs> oh my god <laughs> And then, I'm not kidding, this was in uh, 2004, so right before the Iraq war started, <laughs> him and a mate stay, stayed up for like 96 hours straight, <laughs> doing coke and watching CNN because they didn't want to miss the start of the war. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is the most rock-coded drug bender I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> Your friend, eh, Ron? Your friend, yeah? Your friend. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, CNN on one screen, C-SPAN on the other. <laughs> CBBS on a third. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then essentially he burnt out all the serotonin receptors and spent two days in the dark crying because there was a war on. It really was quite something. <laughs> something <laughs> hell. <laughs> oh. yeah, Can we do anything for the 20th anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> To turn it up to the model UN with just a bunch of tabs of acid. <laughs> anyway, God, I think be fun. Uh, <laughs> without being too identifying, I think unironically that guy works for the the dev team of Gears of War now. So you know, it, it all worked out. Yeah, the Gear of War. That's it. <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, having said all that, shall shall I take you or like shall I introduce you to some people who want to take you to? To the pub place, not yet polluted by capitalism. <laughs> are we joining? Are, are we joining God. the libertarians again? As, as, as Maybe. Tim, as Tim Curry set out on an adventure. <laughs> is is Lemby all pick and bold in this one as well, Rob? No, he's no. not. <laughs> he's, no, because this is not his type of vibe. And now a word from our sponsors. Everything is fucking expensive. Subscribe to Praxiscast at patreon.com forward slash Praxiscast. Um, so I wonder if, if you have ever considered like space and, and, and how to get things into space and how difficult that sometimes is. I assume we just yeet them really hard. Well, we can, but the problem is we could, the current yeeting strategy involves rockets and uh, rocketry is actually bad. It's I'm bad. Like, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It seems highly effective right now. I'm against rockets. 
<laughs> sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, the, the question you should be asking, why, like, why are the rockets bad? And the answer is, well, the, the rockets the are, yes. Von Braun. <laughs> Sadly, as we'll get to later on in this story, the alternative also devised by Nazis. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Are we, are we on to season four of For All Mankind now? Is that, is that <laughs> So, like, well, what, yeah, what like, weird rockets... Show. Rockets might be, like, flexible. They go exactly in the main time, if you're not Elon Musk, you know, like, where you want them to go. But <laughs> the problem the problem with, with rocketry is, is it has very bad marginal costs, uh, and that makes getting things up into space very expensive. I, I don't even know what that means. It means that, like, per kilogram of shit you want to get up there, it's very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so but why if I... It's expensive, then? You know, you know how yeah, the post office weighs your parcel, right? Yeah. Aye. Imagine that, but bigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. The, the I am sub rotating that in my mind palace <laughs> as we speak. Uh, Rotation extra. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sub rocket master scandal of 2035 was really quite something when it yeah. came out. <laughs> doing, doing illegal maneuvers in Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> so what if I told you that there was a better way to get stuff into space uh, I wouldn't believe you <laughs> no I think have, you should have we, have we finally should... teched up to the Brexit railgun baby <laughs> <laughs> Did... so what if the creation getting of getting things into space involves building a, what I'm not kidding is a really 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 big gun uh, this this is so I wanted to talk for the rest of this episode about a company called Longshot. Uh, they oh just, my you know, god! <laughs> oh no! Come on! Their uh, their Twitter tagline uh, is quote oh, building I, is quote building comically so large tween? cannon. <laughs> 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 their tagline is building comically large cannons to unlock the solar system. Don't use comically if you're trying to be a serious space. Don't do that. Yeah, Come if the whole on. point is to use a large gun to threaten space and gravity into submission, then you want to be really, like, you know, built up about it. Like, Are they painting, like, a circus mural on the side and stuff in a cloud? <laughs> like, what's going on? It's the equivalent of writing my crimes.txt, but with Comic Sans. Like, that's not admissible in court. Yeah. Is, I think, I think, like, Lila's onto something there. They should paint rockets like to look cooler. You know yeah. I mean? Whenever anyone sends a rocket up to space, it's always just like fucking shit. Jamie, they Jamie's should get going. The guy, you should get the guy that paints Arnold Schwarzenegger on the side of the funhouse at like the town moor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do a, do a bunch of fucking... celebrities down the side of the rocket. Oh man, the heavy yeah, metal wizard painted on the yeah. side. <laughs> Jamie's going full orc. Like if everyone just wills it to like, wills Elsa. <laughs> On the side of the rocket to <laughs> make it go faster, it does. Yeah, I mean, maybe there, maybe there's something to that. I mean, fucking Elon Musk is managing to succeed despite himself, and he's got a, di a dipshit army who all believe in him. So maybe you know. Just yeah, but saying. does he have Rachel from Friends painted on the side of his rocket? <laughs> I don't think he does. For all we know, there's a giant Mr. Really Blobby small. painted on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> All I'm saying is use the National Defense Act and nationalize Ben Garrison to draw on the side of big rockets. <laughs> Labeling it rocket. Do you know, David, you put blobby ones go weirder in my head now, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Hmm. So, so I think the, the, the next erotic, I should imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Noel. Thanks for that one. <laughs> so, so this isn't a very of course, fun house. <laughs> oh. so of course, the next question that you might be answering yourself is why do we need a big rail gun? Uh, and the answer is that I, this is from to show God, the obviously. fucking head. <laughs> I promise you, your head is not large and is not that larger than needs this size gun. I think I honestly think that's the wrong question. Why don't we need a large rail gun? Like, <laughs> let, let's be optimistic about this. I can think of several uses for a large rail gun that actually works. So you could yeah, choose it to just troll Elon. Shoot you with. in the head. 
shoot them in the head. <laughs> <laughs> so many what uses for a real gun. Everybody, what look if? under your seat. There's a rail gun <laughs> for you. You get a rail gun. Yeah, but what if that purple dickhead from Transformers the movie turned up and tried to eat us? We'd need a rail gun then, wouldn't we? <laughs> Thanos. <laughs> uh, no, Accelerating the, the, Ant-Man's relativistic speeds. <laughs> so the, 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 the reason we need it, this is according to uh, Mike Grace, the CEO of Longshot, quote, because we need to move absolutely CEO shit enormous... CEO name incorporated. <laughs> we need to move absolutely enormous amounts of material into space at the lowest costs. And Why? We, I, well, that's a very... Thank you for asking that, Lila. And that is because if we are ever to become a space-faring civilization... Can we, we need afford to, like, move not all to our, build like, a ladder to God? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like he, if we want to become wrong, a... The, oh, no, there's there's a very good reason. reason a oh, I'm set. sorry, Rob. Do people keep cutting you off? <laughs> <laughs> Are we in waiting the irony dome? <laughs> Wait a minute, this one's also useless. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Yeah, no, it's, it's good to be doing this shit because the more things we put in space, the faster we can achieve Kessel Syndrome. And that way, colonialism in space just can't happen. That's good. Well, actually, it's what the other way around. The, it's because what we, if we need used to do big colonialism gun to, in space. Like, shoot all of. Elon satellites out of out of orbit. Yeah, exactly. That would be very. That funny. achieves the other. That's that's all good. All of that is good. <laughs> uh, no, the reason is is because if we want to become a spacefaring civilization, we need to like like get our stuff up there. Like we get to need to get all our flat pack furniture in there. I don't want to become any kind of civilization. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's too late, Jamie. Not even with Leonard Jamie. Nimoy. <laughs> 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 you go tell Leonard he can't have a civilization. <laughs> He's already got one. Baba not to. <laughs> hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, so by the by the stuff they mean you know flat pack furniture later, but they first want to use uh, the giant space railgun uh, to. I'm, just, I'm picturing that bit from Star Trek Into Darkness where young Spock phones older Spock to ask him how to deal with like fucking. <laughs> the thing that happened in his past or whatever. But it's about, like, you know what I mean, barbarians next to his city in, at the start of a Civ game. <laughs> uh, no, by, by stuff, they initially mean, you know, like, flatback... 80-year-old uh, Leonard later. Nimoy going, build a fucking granary! <laughs> <laughs> Is, it, is this just what you imagined it would be like to explain to your mum how to play Civ? <laughs> <laughs> it should still be stuck on the post office analogy. <laughs> let, let, let it Nimoy screaming at you that you're doing the build order wrong is incredible. <laughs> Uh, now the first thing they want to the long shot wants to send up you know with I, 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 I hasten to say again a giant cannon is uh, stuff like fuel and satellites you know easily transportable things by cannon yeah the, my understanding of satellites is that they're not very sensitive pieces of equipment so you can just accelerate those things as fast or as slow as you want really yeah yeah <laughs> It's very easy. Quote, quote again the CEO, we are here to crack the solar system open like an egg. Mm, that doesn't sound like a good idea. That sounds like how you get demons. <laughs> yeah, this is just sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> Me just cracking the solar system on the edge of the kitchen bench with one hand and getting bits of it under the microwave. <laughs> 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 Mike Grace had have a red eye, <laughs> red glint in his eye, as he said, we will simply open an eye of terror in this solar system. <laughs> <laughs> so having established why we need this thing, because obviously, you know, we, we do. I don't believe uh, we have. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, God said no more towers, and we've got a workaround, so it's all yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so basically, this this company the moon went like has had it too good for too long. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's time we showed it the American way of life. 
<laughs> There's a film about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a rough day to be a clanger that's all i'm saying <laughs> clangers are a threat to western democracy do you have any idea what that soup's made of <laughs> look the, the clangers have simply added to their repertoire and included the shahada they are now embraced in the light of islam it's fine <laughs> oh no the one thing we didn't want to happen <laughs> <laughs> so this is some copy from their website longshot is a company dedicated to putting gigatons of raw material into orbit for 100 <sighs> times cheaper than any rocket ever could by launching payloads out of a hypersonic gas gun that achieves a mostly kinetic orbital insertion. I right, mean, to be fair, it doesn't, specify, it doesn't specify the state of those gigatons of raw material because we can just throw any old shit up there. But like getting it there in one piece is usually the key distinguishing factor, right? We can, and yet Tony Blair remains outside of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, did you say, did they say raw material? Yes, raw materials. Yeah. So, hang on, fuel, refined fuel counts as a raw material? Uh, well, in the build, or- build order, yes. Like, I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I'd consider this being gas of raw material. That's yeah. true. <laughs> okay, you got me. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, essentially, first, like... First they fire, like, big chunks of mineral into orbit, and then they fire, like, an SCV to mine it and bring it back. <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> most efficient system for the distribution of resources. We all love the circular economy. <laughs> Is that when it's in orbit? Yep. <laughs> yep. Planets around, so, the sun's around, the moon's around. We all love the round. elliptical economy. Yeah. Uh, so if you if you're uh, if you're curious uh, at, at this point, um, the long shot is not just like a theoretical idea. They are they have actually and, and I swear to Christ, it is essentially in somebody's like um, uh, like in, in in an American sized garage. Um, they <laughs> they they have already built like a a tech a a, a test model which is uh, which is 20, <laughs> 20 feet long, um, and it can go up to Mach uh, four point two. Um, and so they have a working test model, and all they simply seek is the funding to expand it. How do they know it's working? It. What have they yeah. shot out of it? Uh, Are they going to they... put stuff in orbit around a bird? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, yeah, actually, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you a picture. This oh. is uh, this is the oh my grace, uh, you know, imagine, picture material always imagine, works like, great you, in a podcast. You get on a plane to go on holiday, and when you land, the plane has a moon. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is this is claps. This is simply okay. the cabinet. This is the this most is not real. home gym I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> this is page this is thirteen mo- of a GBS thread in two thousand and four. Yep, yeah. <laughs> <I would> definitely- <laughs> this is exactly what I was thinking. I would definitely buy painted Warhammer figurines off this guy, but I don't know about the space cannon. <laughs> Well, actually, this, this, like, that is, is that only a... the first model. Uh, I'll put up this. This is the uh, that's the first scale model. This is the current model they're working on with an actual picture of a 4.2 Mac launch. So they've upgraded their <sighs> shed to light industrial yard, and now it's just a big pipe. This is a right. fucking Steam game. This is a Steam simulator game where you start off making a potato yeah, gun. Yeah, satisfactory. And then satisfactory you get... this. <laughs> I'm actually. In, in... <laughs> But like all Steam games, it inevitably serves as a pa- uh, pipeline to Nazi ideas. So yeah, it checks out. It all makes perfect sense. This is this yeah. is just the Saddam Hussein thing. I've been uh, having a look online actually, and I've found um, there is a picture on Google of what the outside looks like, and it's this. <laughs> 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 I'm reconsidering my position on this. As we speak. How, how do they find Saddam Hussein with a hat like that? <laughs> An excellent joke I've just made there for the uh, audio medium. Oh, do we do it all the time. I won't worry we'll about it. We'll include it. Don't worry. Yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, so a quote again, copy from the website. We have already hit Mark 4.6. Next up is Mark 6, then Mark 15, look, okay, look, I'm then just, bro, Mark I'm not, I've been trying to work out. I've been trying to work out who that paint that, that paint of Magnum PI actually looks like, and it's Hiachi Mishima from Tekken. <laughs> 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 See a little bit lunch out of Hayachi Mishima had a cone head. Um, <laughs> we should just make that the episode art. This fucking <laughs> so, Rob. Yes. The, so the whole the whole the whole point of this fucking thing is to yes. fire projectiles basically from sea level into yes. orbit. Yes. At, at several How times hard? the speed of sound. Yeah, it's not that hard. And yeah, okay. by several times, you mean uh, 30 times. It, that That's the projected. <laughs> okay. Um, d- does, does at any point, does the atmosphere factor into these, into this? Later on, it does. I'll, t- I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell La- you Later on. It. Okay, so we're gonna accelerate <laughs> up to like Mach thirty or whatever, and then we're just gonna see what see how see what happens and get weird with it. So the, what what they've done so far is a built a quote unquote modernized nineteen forties gas gun, um, and simply <laughs> you know <laughs> uh-huh. um, built out of steel, concrete, and pressurized gas that makes it fully reusable. Nineteen forties, uh, huh? Any, mm, any particular like, <laughs> yeah. any, any particular geographical location? Uh, Do oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, would it be spoilers to say that orbital cursed... mechanics without mentioning an axis? So <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop looking at that fucking Magnum PI. He knows what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> Does he approve or disapprove, Paul Jamie? <laughs> It does look slightly Magnum supportive. Rosach. He looks yeah. a bit like he looks a bit like Yakub. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So essentially, the base reason why you could do it with like a, a uh, modernized 1940s gas gun is because of the, the the cost. So according to Longshot themselves, they estimate that their method would cost about ten dollars uh, a kilo to get into orbit versus like the latest one of the le- biggest is... like uh, SpaceX ones, yeah, which but, costs okay. about six thousand right. five hundred dollars so, for so uh, everything. A kilo. Everything I know about orbital mechanics, admittedly, I did learn from Kerbal Space Program. However. Yeah, you're an expert. Yes, yes, yeah. we've certified you. Which, which is to say, I know literally anything about them. This would be like the most insane orbit you've ever seen, though, because you've got you've got one impulsive energy in one direction, and then what are they are they strapping fucking uh, thrusters onto onto this payload? What what is going on? What are they, are they just firing rock, big rocks also, into space? What the fuck Presumably, is that? If you get the angle right, then the atmospheric drag would then pull it in enough to slow it down to a point it would... where it's like not a terrible orbit. But that sounds like the most difficult and inefficient fucking way of doing it. So this but this also, sounds also like the like sort of thing out. where if you were trying to do it like in a in a video game, it would take you like ten attempts. Do you know what I mean? I'm just picturing them like you know, the NASA turn up with a, a bunch of fucking cans that they want up on the on the International Space Station and these <laughs> Wazics like fire the cans and they just disappear like out into the fucking outer reaches of the solar system and they're like, No, hold on, dial it down a little bit and then try again and just fire like another bag of cans and that one just like crashes into the ocean and it's like, No, up a bit, mate. Just <laughs> Also, like, if we're talking about the real mechanics of this for a second, the um the atmospheric drag would generate heat, right? This is so, what I was getting you know, at earlier, one... yeah. Yeah, like it would, it would deform and melt. Like you need some kind of casing, like Alistair says. Oh, he and we'll also, get a big and this bullet, is, obviously. Yeah. Well, no, but the the other thing, the other thing is that rockets do a steady acceleration over time, whereas guns famously start with a very big acceleration no, no. Ah, and ah, then a drop. No, off they in thought speed. of this. They thought of this, James. Like uh-huh. you, uh, a second you, smaller you, gun. The, the gun, yeah, <laughs> fires a smaller gun. <laughs> A booster gun, if you will. 
<laughs> so so yeah, essentially the reason why you want to keep these costs like as low as possible is uh, <laughs> again this is the example from uh long shot their, their website uh from their ceo is um imagine what if we did hawaii but in space so there's 1.4 billion people who live in hawaii but they import 13 million tons of stuff annually and if they all live in space then we have to shoot that up there and it would be too, why, simply too market? expensive. Ooh, the, the the argument just, is captured. Sim- I would simply, I would simply not do Hawaii in space. <laughs> <laughs> also, who's the Surely indigenous the culture we're stealing it from in space? Yeah, but Jamie, are they, what, sorry, what? are they revealing aliens? Are, they, are we, are we going to go up there and force the alien queen to sign a, a pact with our, you know, capitalists and then steal their land and create Hawaii in space? Is that, is that what we're talking about here? Did this guy just accidentally reveal Area Fifty One? Really reaching for um, make the plot of Lilo and Stitch too real. <laughs> Jamie, let me dream. Jamie, yes? if we don't if we don't do Hawaii in space, then uh, what are we going to do with this gun that melts everything you put in it? <laughs> we can't allow there to be a Hawaii in space gap. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> when all you've got is a large gun, everything looks like Hawaii. Okay, everything looks like a luau, surely. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> this is once again the, the, the terrible joke that I find funny. Fuck all of y'all. Um, Keep it in. Keep it in. Whoever's on yeah. the edit. <laughs> what did you anyway, just say, Rob? I will not be repeating it's myself. It's a no. word. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, no, I yeah, want to hear... No. I want to hear Rob's Texan accent again. That was great. <laughs> uh, anyway, so no, it's not one big gun. It's it's um, because that would be a problem. Like you can't just have one big gun because essentially the problem of any cannon is basically the same. Uh, if you increase like the if you were to increase the range and like the violence with which the the bullet leaves the barrel, like. The barrel needs to be huge because it needs to contain the explosive force behind it, and there's only so much gas that it can expand behind it before, like, it gives stops giving your projectile a huge, like, a useful push. That's why, like, a gun is very good, but you know, a cannon only has a certain amount of yeah, range. Yeah, I mean, this is this is why rail, rail guns. This is what this is like. What rail guns, in theory, are meant to do is like you are trying to accelerate things faster than. The speed of sound through whatever the speed of sound of uh, like a detonation is. Yeah, so essentially that's the, so instead of that's what this thing is. Instead of having one very big gun with with like lots of pressure up front in the chamber, then less as it comes out of the barrel, you have one very long barrel, but at like set intervals, you have like points where more gas is like pressed behind the projectile, and that way you have like less of an explosion up front. We have more acceleration in the barrel, and I'm not well. There's your problem. So if this does is some this engineer is- writes in and says this is right, go fuck yourself. Why don't you? This sounds like every every step like not that this is a surprise but every step of the way this has just sounded more and more insane Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I mean, there have been examples in the in in the past where these things have been built. It is like conceptually, it is a proven concept. Um, according to the chief te- uh, technology officer uh, who uh, p- previously worked for Neuralink, so you know he's an expert in oh many my- things. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No. Oh, come on. <laughs> This is how they're going to hide all those monkey corpses. Then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we we have fired a monkey corpse into space. The, there is there is no combustion anywhere. The key insight and the fundamental thing that makes the long shot cannon work is that instead of pushing from behind, we can also push from the sides. Our pro- projectile has a long what? tapered tail that that hangs off the back, <laughs> and we squeeze this tail from the sides the same way you would squeeze toothpaste out of a tube. This is the most insane thing I have ever heard. That's this is <laughs> yeah. not how a pressure wave works. So essentially, all their projectiles, like like bullets or like artillery shells, have like flat ends at the end. This one would have like a long, big fish tail that tapers to a point, and then like you, the pressure would be able that to build behind that. Does not make any sense. It makes also, no that's sense. That's not what a fish tail looks like. <laughs> The scientist has logged on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. Fucking Jack Cousteau is here to like. <laughs> took me a while. Took me a while to see a flaw in their plan, but I finally found one. 
I mean, I got this bit from a, a, a presentation uh, at the uh, Foresight Institute, which was done by by the CEO, uh, who then, who, by the way, it's a 10 minute presentation and he starts it with, okay, so listen up assholes. Uh, oh, and then he, oh, wow. And then he literally says the words buckle in before he starts his presentation. I would just kill this. myself on the spot. A GBS <laughs> thread from 2004. I... Yep. <laughs> before turning the gas gun on herself. <laughs> sounds, sounds like it's time for a five site institute. <laughs> 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 quote I'll give you the image I have of an orbital launch from long shot said uh, this chief de- tech officer so we have something like a 10 kilometer long concrete cylinder that is something like 10 feet in diameter and we load the projectile into the breach seal it up I always love we- um, I always love when a scientist says something like when describing an engineering <laughs> process <laughs> also it fills me with confidence i mean i'm enjoying the the mishmash of units as well kilometers and feet yeah this guy's a scientist yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember you when have they a had, degree remember in when baloney that, remember when that mars probe failed because like one lot of engineers was using metric and the yeah other americans well, the best way to solve that problem is to use both sets of units <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we load the projectile into the breach and then seal it up and then we fire in about one second the project goes for, the, the projectile goes from one end of the barrel to the other it exits going about 10 kilometers a second which is mark, about mark 29 the project banks off the atmosphere and rides screaming into the upper what? stratosphere that's um, amazing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so rather than do rather than doing what every single like launch into space has ever done which is essentially coast along the atmosphere once you pass in you're up a certain height we are going so that you can get like an actual orbit around the planet they are going to fire essentially fire horizontally so that it goes directly up yes. i was right i can't believe i was fucking right <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, we are I going mean, to turn you're... an entire fucking like However many hundreds of miles long bit of the equator into a firing range, no one will get mean, to you're this. Something, you're something awful account makes you just as qualified as this guy, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know how they say you. you shouldn't just fire a gun straight up into the air because you never know where that bullet's going to land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's you should fire the gun horizontally so that the bullet will do a sick kickflip into orbit. Yeah, that, <laughs> that makes much more sense. Load you yourself it... into the gas gun. <laughs> <laughs> I love this idea of like the projectile banks up off the atmosphere. It's just like they're just doing sick trick shots, you know, <laughs> with the cannon. They can also, the you know, jump of... the white ball over the stripe. It's really fucking good. This is the, the, the same tier as the fucking explanation as why Mr. Burns doesn't get in like infections like <laughs> <laughs> quote, quote it's like again skimming uh, a stone off a pond into space is this the kind of idea they're going for yeah if you I, if you throw if you throw a rock hard enough james have you not have you never had it like coast upwards into the atmosphere and then down again i've done that yeah skill issue <laughs> I think things just work differently in Scotland, I guess. <laughs> Different latitude, mate. Quote again, the chief tech officer, a little delivery to low Earth orbit, orbit, and then we'll do it again, and we'll do it again. Because, you know, this, this gun, Unless well, you simply reload the gun what? with more stuff. This, this is, this, oh, this is annoying me so much. <laughs> <laughs> So hang on, so what are they shooting up there? Minerals fuel and Fuel and satellites. Fuel. But isn't yeah. fuel notoriously quite explosive? Well, yeah. I mean, not if you I... pack it into the gas gun. Yeah, you there's know no what? explosion <laughs> in the back. I'm sure, I'm sure absolutely nothing will go wrong with taking that a bunch is of, not correct. of uh, <laughs> cryogenic hydrogen in a pressure vessel and accelerating it up to 30 times the speed of sound in sea level atmospheric pressure and yeah no problems whatsoever i'm sure that that will just I'll... get to orbit exactly where you want it to with nothing explosive happening in the intervening time see 
Alistair, you just don't dream big enough because when you're already breaking all these rules of physics, what's fluid dynamics? It's just one more in the pile, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you considered <laughs> simply shoot the moon? <laughs> I mean, honest, honestly, this fucking idea sounds like you know, you know, you get the, those compressed air guns that people use in like uh, uh, ga- car garages and stuff. Like, just getting a bunch of those, sticking those in a big tube, and being like, "Yep, we've invented the Gauss cannon." What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All you've invented is a Beyblade that kills people. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I reckon, though, if you tried that, you could get some investment capital. <laughs> <laughs> Jack <Jack-nies>. needs uh, Yeah. <laughs> Alistair, if you, if you enjoyed that, please do enjoy this. Uh, again, this is uh, fr- this. from the same interview with uh, the CTO. The barrel, all 10 kilometers of it, will be, quote, made out of the same stuff you would build an overpass out of. It's mild steel and concrete. So the system we're building that sits on the ground and does all this work and results in an, a- results in an aerospace result. That's a quote, by the way. It's a really good quote. <laughs> it really is a piece of civil infrastructure. Oh, well, that's you know what, all right, this guy, then. what if this Ocean guy... Gate was a giant fucking gun? I mean, <laughs> this guy is fucking Aperture Sciences Cave Johnson, and you can't convince me otherwise at this what point. If, what if we took the Hyperloop and just straightened it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Hypertube. There you the go. The Hyperline. <laughs> The hype line is something there. No, no. Uh, no. They, they. However, the <laughs> the good people at Logshot have, however, noticed. Um, you know, at least one small drawback from building a ten-kilometer-long gas-powered oh, cannon. Only one. It, well, there's a few, but they admit to at least this one, which is that like the blast noise from you know the end of the giant canyon would basically be you know earth shattering. It would be you know thirty times <laughs> someone breaking the sound barrier. Uh, that according to to one interview, this is a note on the side, but <laughs> to quote unquote might deafen entire ecosystems. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Which I assume is good. What if they just what if they just built the ten kilometer long concrete gun and then like turned it on its side so it was aiming straight up? Would that not be better? <laughs> <laughs> well actually I'm not sure what the angle of this gun versus, you know, the, the curvature of the earth is gonna be. I don't know if it's actually flat or like at an angle. I, it, it, I if tried it's, to if work it's this ten kilometers if it's ten kilometers long, it is going to have to be curved. Like that's no, just, they're yeah. flat earth guys. They're flat earth guys. That's the only way this works. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lila's finally gonna it. crack the great, gonna shoot the great ice wall and see what's behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a bunch of Flawless. fucking whites or something. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of the whites <laughs> instead of conquering the Black Watch, start up the world's most annoying like California startup. <laughs> <laughs> It's like three whites hanging out at the kombucha tank. <laughs> and also because like because they want to do these like launches or shots, I suppose, uh, like multiple times a day if I mean, they do I'm, ever build I'm it. I'm gonna be gonna be real with you. It's basically a detonation. Like every, every time this thing goes off. <laughs> so yeah, like I, that you can't build it too close to civilization because you know of the earth shattering blast noises you would you know hear and be deaf by. Just, just build, build it in the jungle and fuck up some monkeys. Well, actually, you, could, or you want to do it in the opposite. They said we could build it in the Australian outback because, like, nobody's there, I guess. <laughs> said CEO Mike Grace, quote, you wanted somewhere where an atomic bomb could go off and no one would notice. Oh, my Christ. Mm. I... Yeah, famous, famously, uh, atomic bombs, when they were tested, have only ever gone off in places that no one cares about. <laughs> but yeah, you, you uh, uh, James. Imagine I think they you were fire a... this thing. They fire this thing in the Australian outback, and for the next three weeks, it's raining spiders around the globe. <laughs> <laughs> I think they should do it now. <laughs> So I, I did the, I, I just did the calculation for it, and on ten kilometers, the curve of the Earth drops about eighty centimeters, give or take, right? So yeah, just put a with chair that in mind, it. yeah, like you, you could potentially, you could potentially, if you built it in the outback, have a poor fucking kangaroo hop in front of it at exactly the wrong moment. So yeah, 
Like, I'm, I'm, why not? Why not? What else can we no, use it's for space you just build for, a really? fence. Just build yeah. a fence that always stops nature. Yeah. Also, also, yeah, I would, it, I would put like a chair at like the far end. I would just put a couple yeah, no, of, like of beer mats on just... at the beginning. That's yeah. Just, <laughs> just yeah. use your, just use your ten kilometer gun carter to bank the shot <laughs> off of the fence. <laughs> <laughs> And, and achieve your orbital insertion. <laughs> An imperator-sized titan, but he looks like Christian Bale. <laughs> <laughs> what if they uh, just made the end of the barrel, like, you know what I mean? Like, curve upwards? Like like Bugs Bunny had been at, like, Elmer Fudd's gun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that that only works if we put the CEO in drag. <laughs> Someone should do a, like a mod for roller roller coaster tycoon that lets you build this. Uh, there's a uh, there's they a did. presentation. It's called that... satisfactory. <laughs> there's a there's a Mr. ten minute Boom's presentation. This is this is. <laughs> This is the one uh, where he begun, begins with "buckle up, fuck nuts," um, and it's written up. In, it's, <laughs> um, it, it's written up on a website called New Atlas, and I'll read you a little bit of of them describing this thing, which is amazing. Um, because Deal afterwards, he, he... <laughs> <laughs> now there's a brief Q and A at the end, um, where one of the one of the people in the audience asks what kind of projectile are you thinking of using because like i know james you you were asking how that i was also asking this yeah many so people basically were asking many people have been asking <laughs> <laughs> uh basically what you need is to who is shoot bang a... galt <laughs> <laughs> this is bang gob speaking <laughs> um so what you need is a huge, huge, enormously huge shell that is covered in lots and lots of lots of um, heat ablative material. Uh, in the presentation, the CEO talks about uh, essentially a shell with a two meter diameter that will just ca careen in. Does that is... fit correctly into a 10 foot ish barrel? Yeah, th so uh, that's, that is, that is, uh, no, I, I don't want to know about the Japanese rock band 10 feet. Um, <laughs> 10 feet is about 3 meters so that is like 2 thirds <laughs> 2 thirds of uh, in, of like ablative material yeah but but the rest is like you know the, the tube is made out of out of you know civilian infrastructure like concrete so it's fine don't worry about it yeah lined with rifle tarmac so, yeah so so long, so long as your payload is less than at 1 meter in any dimension it's fine <laughs> Yeah, so like back of cans for the ISS, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, sending sending a yard of ale into space to make a point. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm calling this the Rods Two God device. <laughs> I'm just now picturing the world's most determined and you know de fatalistic delivery delivery guy when the ISS calls down for a carryout to go on with the uh, cans, you know? <laughs> no, it's fine. You just cram a delivery driver into that barrel with, a, you know, with a little scooter, and then it's fine. Yeah. Britain needs, uh, to, Britain Starmer needs to build a rival... Keir level crossing. Yeah. Turn left, Keir, no! <laughs> Britain needs to build a rival gun that will launch an SUV. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a quote from uh, this is a quote from that report. It's uh, this is the again this is Mike Race's CEO talking. Um, it's a question of ballistic coefficient. He told an audience member at the presentation in a rapid fire masterclass of condescending sing song tone that brings to mind a turbocharged <laughs> version of the comic book guy from The Simpsons. <laughs> They sent GBS a poet. 2004. For once they sent a poet. Stop this <laughs> from happening. <laughs> if you try to go small, i.e., if you don't do the two meter diameter shell, your volume to area, uh, your surface area to volume ratio sucks, and the fraction of the vehicle that must be ablative material, you know, because of all the heat, because you're going at Mach 30, is very high, potentially exceeding 100%. So we can't make small bullets to go into out into orbit. We have to make huge bullets because otherwise it doesn't work. Okay. 
And speaking of being comic book guy, by the way, he is wearing. Uh, I had to pause this 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 presentation a few times to fully get it. He is wearing a T-shirt with a big like angry uh, opossum on it that says, "Let's eat trash and get hit by a car." <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't fault him for that. Like everyone needs <laughs> dreams. <laughs> yeah, but when your when your fucking dream is to make Bullet Bill from Mario real, I'm really not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you know like i said uh, uh it, it is a 1940s style gas gun so you know who else tried this that's right it was first tried by the german oh, empire at the at the end of world war one it didn't work then oh <laughs> but but you know who else tried this that's right also the nazis <laughs> Or the German because Empire, the, because basically this is the this is the V three, which uh, it, to Germans was also known as the Busy Lizzie, um, <laughs> which the Nazis had a really hard time getting to work that seems, because it's, that seems far too whimsical a name for the Germans to have come up with. <laughs> it, it, uh, because like they almost got like done creating a, a working site. They would have called it the Business Lizness or something. Like that. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so like, they almost got like a site working in France to lob like giant shells at uh, London, uh, except that the Allies just like bombed the shit out of the position before you know it, it got working. Um, they did, however, manage to build a different site and hit the city of Luxembourg with a working gun for a little bit until that too was, you know, overrun. Okay, but, but I think Luxembourg's a lot closer than the moon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you say this. Yes. Uh, well, you say this, Jamie, uh, and, and the reason that we know that, like, it's a lot closer than the moon, that's because you know who else tried this. <laughs> that's right, the American military in the mid nineteen fifties, <laughs> in cooperation also the with Nazis. the Canadian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, they actually made like they had like a, a more successful attempt. Uh, basically, what they what they did is the U.S. Navy, which it, I assume like a peak of we have some shit left over from World War II, uh, gave them two giant Navy ship cannons. Uh, they basically bolted those together and then started shooting giant projectiles um, that never made it like more than 180 kilometers from the surface, which that is very high. But I was checked. I checked with NASA and low Earth orbit begins at 2,100 kilometers. So the American military, you know, in an age where they were literally doing atom bombs outside Las Vegas, you know, and everybody thought that was cool, got less than 10% of the way. What is it Germans <laughs> have against the moon? Because that's three attempts by Germans that I can count. <laughs> well, according to the latest <laughs> Interior Ministry press release, it's, uh, it's pro-Palestinian, so they're simply trying to arrest it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but you know who else tried this? <laughs> That's Jules right. Verne? No, Saddam Hussein. <laughs> he yes. rides again. He rides again. To be fair, I've never seen Saddam Hussein and Jules Verne in a room together. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing the cannon with a red outline of Saddam in it now. <laughs> Yeah, S Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden, both many leagues on the sea. <laughs> Much to think about. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was Project Babylon, which is a good name for, for like a giant gun project. Uh, and it essentially was designed to be a very, very big gun uh, that was, uh, <laughs> was designed to hurl shells all the way from Baghdad to New York, which is <laughs> I mean, pretty fucking sick. Fair enough. Yeah. Still closer than the moon. Uh, the main engineer of this project, by the way, was the same engineer who was behind the uh, US project, which which failed. Um, he was also assassinated, possibly by Mossad, because he was working for uh, Saddam. Um, <laughs> and also, <laughs> Jamie, in a bit of delightful trivia, maybe a movie that we need to watch, uh, this building of a giant gun for Saddam Hussein was made into the 1994 HBO movie Doomsday, starring Frank Langella and Kevin Spacey, and also Clive oh. Owen for some reason <laughs> no <laughs> why I think I him, 
I think they've not thought this big gun thing through properly, obviously, but I think they should, instead of shooting stuff to the moon, forget that, scale it down a bit and just replace delivery drivers. That would be loads (laughs) better. I mean, if it can get stuff to 180 kilometres, that's fine. It can get stuff from Tesco to my house. Yeah. So, like... (laughs) This is the Brexit railgun. This this would solve customs. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> and essentially, and Lila, for, for delivery to get it. like, for delivery to get like d- dinner to your table by means of you know g- giant cannon, all it takes is you know most of the windows and doors in Greater Scotland. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Greater we Scotland. Famously, don't need those because the weather here is lovely. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Most of Glasgow's flat anyway. <laughs> yeah, so if if you're asking, you know, who, who is doing this to us? Well, the, the answer includes Sad Maltman, the CEO of OpenAI. Oh, <laughs> of course. That it is. fucking guy. Of course it is. ChatGBT designed me a railgun that will be able to, allow to enable me to launch uh, large quantities of raw materials into orbit. <laughs> Is is this stupid shit why um like fucking Orkney Eye is never gonna make a profit? <laughs> it's and you, very should view, you should view investing as more of a charitable donation. One of many reasons I would have thought like yeah. what, what if your donation simply banked off the lower atmosphere and then went into <laughs> orbit? <laughs> yeah, NFTs work the same way. <laughs> the subtext of the charitable indeed. donation is I have a mouth and I must feed <laughs> what if they built the gun big enough that firing it like moved the earth closer to the sun <laughs> no it's the other way around it's that Futurama episode with the, with the big ice cube we just scooch slowly away from the sun it's fine yeah that might uh, actually fix climate change there you go yeah do yeah. it um, yeah, yeah, so Sam Altman Bill is Gates? in a bunch of other. <laughs> ev- yeah, basically they've only, but they've been f- funded by like a bunch of like investment firms and the uh, uh, United States Air Force uh, because they're interested for some reason in a giant cannon. Uh, you know, we sh- we shan't specify. And for for all this effort, you know, they have simply uh, gone eight million dollars so far, to, to, and they want to move into the into the California desert to build, you know, an even bigger cannon. I mean, eight million dollars has got to buy you a lot of drain pipe, right? <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> When they announced all this shit in their very own Twitter uh, uh, thread, the the replies, as you will imagine, mostly included, you know, people trying to sell you on their OnlyFans and stuff. But it also included some amazing co-ideas, which is the last bit I wanted to mention. Um, (laughs) And one of those ideas, indeed, Jamie, was to, why don't you build build your railgun inside an old oil well? Like, because there's a lot of pipes already there. You wouldn't need to build so many anymore. Why don't they just repurpose that stretch of highway that the Bukowskis built for the Matrix sequels? <laughs> <laughs> Another, what I thought was maybe an even more delightfully whimsical idea, was instead of, you know, keeping that 10 kilometer concrete gun on the ground, you know, like, just, which is stupid, why don't they simply st- st- strap the gun to a balloon? <laughs> that way it would reduce <laughs> atmospheric drag. <laughs> Strap the gun to a balloon. <laughs> yes. Not so, suspend it from a balloon. Strap it to the balloon. David, yes. have you got have you got the cure of reporting drop? I, I do not. No. Oh. I really like the idea that the recoil from that though just blasts the fucking barrel of the gun down into the ground and just it's an extinction <laughs> just keep, level event. Just keep Fuck firing. It. Just keep firing. Yeah. <laughs> I just build it in Yellowstone and pop it like a pimple. <laughs> no, what you simply need to do is rehash that final shit scene from the Uncharted movie, and instead of having like a small helicopter with a small pirate ship, you have a gigantic helicopter with an enormous pirate ship with, you know, a couple of 10 kilometer cannons on it. <laughs> work, work for Mark Wahlberg, I don't see how it can't work We're for us. broadside the moon. Yes! <laughs> Imagine if these dipshits accidentally like punch a hole through to the hollow earth. <laughs> the that explains why all the Nazis were really keen on the project. 
Hitler just really wanted to bag a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because then the lightened master they could... of the whole of earth gets his carry out delivered. Yeah, okay, here for it. Yeah, because then Jamie, like, if if Hitler got his hands on dinosaurs, he could fit, you know, sick laser helmets to them and then have them do combat. <laughs> There's one more suggestion, and then we'll stop talking about the about the moon rail cannon, which is why don't we do it the other way around? If we simply use this gun on the moon or from an asteroid, there's no friction, and we can go even further. That no, that that one actually does make much more sense. Like you could do that with the moon; it would be fine, probably. <laughs> This still, I just find all of this very annoying. Still, yeah. The th- the problem with the problem with building the the giant gun in space is that like Getting it's expensive it to, to get things into space. Yeah, yeah. And so, from, like, by that's... and by my by my recollection, concrete and steel are quite heavy. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> yeah, sound but... right. But if we if we first first build a cannon on Earth and then we we shoot up all the concrete that we need to do it with an asteroid and then we build even yeah, a bigger what, gun up what there. If, what if we made a bigger gun on Earth and then we put yeah. the now smaller gun inside? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyway, that's the. This is the new revised version of the Brexit railgun. I hope we all learned something today. <laughs> oh yeah. Someone, someone, tell us whether or not you could put a trebuchet on the moon and have the same effect. <laughs> you could use a, You could use a trebuchet on the moon. Yeah, yeah. but can you get something into orbit from a uh, trebuchet prob- on the moon? Probably. Uh, hold on. Escape velocity of the two point three eight kilometers per second. Oh yeah, easy. Yeah, I mean that's quite that. fast, but like, and there's no no friction. There's though. no air resistance. Yeah, yeah. I, I can run faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> On <Okay>. the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the moon. On an asteroid. You know, just <laughs> any old where really. <laughs> Squaring up my giant, giant for wall to say there's only one way to forward. find out, and we need to shoot <laughs> Rob to the moon. Yeah, Rob, I just need you to get into this one square meter sphere, um, <laughs> a one cubic meter sphere rather. Yeah, we painted the cannon in clown colours. Here's a pot. Wear it on your head. We'll play the Monkey Island music. You'll be there yeah. before you know it. I don't want to yeah, wear the, these the Rebel Dad fit again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, do we want some comment or commentary on then? Hell yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Various Iran backed terrorist groups cause worldwide trouble. It isn't nice when these groups unleash terror attacks, whether it's Ugh. the Twin Towers in America, sites in London, or elsewhere. Is that comment or commentary? At? Uh, commentary. commentary yeah. yeah, commentary. Yeah. Comment. Uh, that was a comment in the Express on a, on a story titled "Iran Israel Live." Nearly two hundred missiles fired at Tel Aviv. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people Ugh. finding out that the Iron Dome isn't a real dome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's neither iron nor a dome. <laughs> <laughs> So right, it's more one. of a rhomboid, if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> we must stop all this unlawful suppression of free speech before the sickle and hammer replace our Union Jack. Is oh, that man. comment or commentary? Uh, commentary, commentary this, surely. This is me every time Every time I play Victoria 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, comment. Commentary. Comment. That was a comment in the Daily Mail. Mm. Uh, on a, on an article by Julie Birchill. When cry bully goons ejected me and a group of fifty middle aged people from a pub because someone disagreed with our views, I realised we no longer live in a free country. 
critical support to the Gooners for that one. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted them out of their cave. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, the, the Brexit railgun working in tandem with the Gooners. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than cutting down on petrochemical exploration, Norway is hoping to make up for it, make up for a decline in North Sea oil by exploring its Arctic seas. Why on earth is the UK not doing this with its own below-the-surface wealth? Instead, our government has been captured by green zealots who see no connection between natural wealth and a higher standard of living. Instead, Labour are choking off North Sea oil and gas exploration, shutting down coal mines and steelworks. Is that a comment or commentary? North Carolina death count. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Uh, It sounds like Kate Forbes commentary. (laughs) (laughs) This is is The Economist. This sounds like Andrew Neil to me, but it's commentary app for sure. Uh, that was Tim Newark in the Express. European country that shames UK energy policy as Britain witlessly races to net zero. I mean, again, 135 missing uh, in, yeah. in Hurricane Helene's wake. But you'll you'll be um, you'll be interested to learn that the reason it's good that Norway like export like sells all of its North Sea oil to put up its standard of living is that it means it can keep immigration down apparently wow so there you go it's oh. cra- crazy crazy what that North Sea oil can do yeah right they collaborate with domestic criminal networks to threaten their critics on American and European soil Far and away their most effective strategy, however, is the PSYOPs campaigns <laughs> waged through our ubiquitous social media platforms. Their manipulations are deployed covertly, aided by social media anonymity, and weaponized through secret algorithms that profit off outrage, hate, and polarization. The Islamic Republic's oh, plan to radicalize the West Zionist. on social media has enjoyed particularly stunning success with more useful citizens. Is that For fuck's sake, I, I really thought uh, you were talking Colin. about Yuri there, and I was like, I'm fully here you for reckon? it. <laughs> uh, yeah, comment. Commentariat. 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 That was Jordan Peterson in The Telegraph. <laughs> yeah. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> the West's true enemy is clear. <sighs> we must strike now before it's too late. I'm going to count that as being a comment because he is an internet comment just anthropomorphized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you do you see the fucking picture of him with uh what's his face? Um Russell Brand. Russell, Russell Brand. Brand. Yeah, in his fucking Joker outfit. Or it was more like a Two-Face no, outfit to be Two-Face fair. like yeah. yeah. I, I was telling I'm telling you it's the Daedric Prince of Madness Sheogorf. like it's striking how much yeah, he no looks one more like him every is, day. Though. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck off! They've all played Skyrim. Carry on. <laughs> right, last one. It is people like Graham Hancock that will force the cork out of the narrative trickle-controlled bottle. Technology, <laughs> communication, <laughs> has helped us to understand just how much junk science we have been fed. Anomalies are all over the globe, and yet they all look to be from a similar era in nature. Dots have been connected, and we refuse to stay in the dark about our past. Is that comment or commentary? <laughs> is it, is it, is comment? This, does this end up being a spirited Cooking. defense of uh, removing the age of consent? Because that's what it feels like. <laughs> if, you, um, if you shake the bottle, does it become a gas gun? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> no, that only happens if you put the Mentos in. I'm going to mm. say comment. <laughs> comment. Yeah. That's that sounds like conservative woman. <laughs> I, I need it to be comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be contrarian and say commentariat. That was a comment in the Daily Mail uh, on, an, on the article, which was titled "Fingerprints of the Gods: Astonishing Evidence for a 15,000-Year-Old Lost Civilization Who Built the Sphinx and Pyramid of the Sun." And their dire warning for our age reveals best-selling author Graham Hancock. Yeah. <laughs> ah, the Sino-Korean hyperwar. Cool. Yeah, got it. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is you know this is the the first civilization, and you know they warn us about yeah. the incoming solar flare. Yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, that all <laughs> that's a lot for today. You know, we we tackled all the serious issues that have happened today, and now we will not be <laughs> taking further questions at this point. Has anyone checked to see if like we're about to imminent? We're dying? all dead. Yeah. Um, we might be. I mean, all I was dead. inside. I think I think it's fine. Question Aww. mark. <laughs> <laughs> well on that sad note um, because we're all still here you still need to subscribe so patreon.com forward slash praxiscast um, only I think we're alright because everyone on Blue Sky appears to be talking about Diddy <laughs> oh that's worse Diddy or Didney truly, truly we are in hell um, yeah that's, what, that's anyway, why yeah, uh, Iran uh, fired the missiles did you know he's he's apparently sharing a cell with uh, Sam Bankman Freed <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. That's a nightmare blunt rotation if ever you saw one. <laughs> it's a terrifying <laughs> radicalisation in some way or another is what it is. Ugh, no, doesn't be a thing. Yeah. Right, okay, patreon.com forward slash praxiscast. Uh, merch available, praxiscast.tml.com and as always, uh, Twitch streams sometimes happen. Twitch.tv forward slash praxiscast. Yeah, but not others. It's yeah. yeah. Consult yeah. consult your your seeing orb to find out the dates. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely and don't s- listen to us who told us told you last week there was a stream on and then recorded instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't listen, listen to now, what you podcast un- daddy don't die about it. <laughs> don't well, believe you, our lies. If you <laughs> are not constantly sat on our Twitch page waiting with bated breath for us to go live, it's your own fault. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Might like most, I don't know who else's fault it could be. <laughs> <laughs> and all that remains to be said is, uh, Lila, thank you very much for coming on, and thank you very much for not talking about piss. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come. I'll come and not talk about piss whenever you want. It's it's you no, know it's fine. you, it's, you it's, can it's also a... talk about piss if you want. I think if you could put yes. if you could put fuel in that bad boy, you could put piss in there. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Speaking of talking about piss, we still need we still need to do an episode about the island. <laughs> yeah, we do actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I will convince my boyfriend Bye. to watch it. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have you got Have you got anything you want to plug? <laughs> Bye. Thanks, um, Jamie. Victory to the Intifada. <laughs> <That was it>. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See ya.